Here we're going to be looking at a consolidated statement of cash flows and the disclosure of purchase for this consolidated statement of cash flows. And what I mean by the disclosure of purchase here is where a parent corporation is going to go out and buy a subsidiary corporation. And for the consolidated statement of cash flows, there has to be a disclosure of this purchase here. So let's go and look at our example here where Corporation P purchases 80% here of Corporation S. And they're going to pay Corporation S in uh, two methods here. They're going to make a cash payment to Corporation S for $310,000. And they're either going to make a, a issue stock to the subcorporation for $180,000, or they're going to issue bonds to the subsidiary corporation here for $180,000. But in either case, the stock issued or the bonds issued are going to go directly to the subcorporation S to purchase the subcorporation S and not to any outside parties. So what we're going to be looking at here is this disclosure that we have to make for this purchase here of the parent corporation purchasing the subsidiary corporation. Now. Uh, for our example here, uh, we would have to determine a fair value of our net assets and our implied price and if there's any goodwill. And then we'd have to develop a distribution schedule and so forth. And then we would be giving here the uh, uh, Corporation S's balance sheet and we'd have to work off of that. But what we're, we're going to be looking here is the disclosure of purchase and what disclosure of purchase would have to be made. Okay, for a disclosure of purchase here for a consolidated statement of cash flows. Again, a corporation S, the subsidiary, is being purchased by corporation P, the parent here. And what disclosures we have to make here. First, for our cash flows for investing activities. Now, there was a payment for the purchase here of corporation, the subcorporation S. And what we look at is the net cash amount here. And that has to be included in our cash flows for investing activities. In this case, the cash paid by the parent was $310,000 less, but the acquired cash from the subsidiary or corporation S here for $60,000. That was what was sitting on the subsidiary corporation S's balance sheet. So we take the net amount, 310000 less 60000 gives us $250,000. So that's what the payment would have been here, $250,000. That would have been disclosed. And then let's move down here for our cash flows from and financing activities. Now what we're going to notice here is nothing is disclosed here for our financing activities for those uh, uh, stocks issued or the bonds issued in either case here. That is done on that supplemental schedule which we'd be looking at. So going here again, the Corporation P purchases 80% here of Corporation S. The cash paid, that's disclosed up here for our cash flows for investing activities here, net of any cash received. And then the stock issued for 180000 or the bonds issued here for 180000 Those are not uh, listed here for the cash flows from financing activities. So we won't include them here. What we do is we include them on the schedule for non-cash financing and investing activities. And that's a required supplemental schedule here. And that's what we're going to be looking at here. So uh, just remember here, cash flows from financing activities, we don't include any bonds or stocks that were issued to sub corporation S for the purchase. Okay, now looking at the disclosure that has to be made for consolidated financial statements for where uh, the parent corporation P here is buying the subsidiary corporation S here. So what we would have here is a schedule for non-cash financing and investing activities and that's a supplemental schedule to the consolidated financial statements here. So let's first thing that would have to be said here is that the corporation P acquires 80% here of uh, common stock here of corporation S in exchange for in this case it was $490,000 that we had calculated here and in conjunction with the acquisition the liabilities were assumed and non-controlling interest was created as follows. So this statement would have to be made here. Now let's go up and look at our schedule here for non-cash investing and financing activities. Now this is the supplemental schedule and this is what would be included on it. First we have the adjusted value of the assets acquired. In this case it was $752,500. Now if we go up here and look at the subsidiary's balance sheet here, uh, we would uh, get that off our balance sheet here. So we had the total assets here that were adjusted up to their fair value at 
dollars plus in this case we had goodwill here for one hundred seventy two thousand five hundred dollars so adding those together here that would be the total assets here plus a fair value of the assets plus the goodwill for seven hundred and fifty two thousand five hundred dollars now the next thing we would have uh, listed here is the cash paid now that was three hundred and ten thousand dollars that was the cash payment to the subsidiary here for the purchase of the subsidiary so that total three hundred and ten thousand dollar cash payment would be included here now uh, netting those two amounts here we come up with a balance of four hundred forty two thousand five hundred dollars now that would be apportioned out here and it would have to be stated as such here where you got this common stock issued or we could have uh, had bonds issued in either case they would have been issued to the subsidiary here either the common stock or the bonds here for the example here and that would be listed at one hundred eighty thousand dollars the value of the common stock or the value of the bonds here and then we next we'd have the liabilities assumed here and in this case it was a hundred and forty thousand dollars now that we would get off our balance sheet here for the subsidiary corporation so going up here and looking at the balance sheet that uh, total liabilities here at their fair value was $140,000. So going back down to our schedule here for a non-cash investing and financing activities here, that supplemental schedule, you've got the $140,000 here for the liabilities assumed. And then lastly here we'd have the non-controlling interest or the subsidiaries portion here at the date of acquisition and that was for one hundred twenty two thousand five hundred dollars now we would get that off uh, the distribution schedule here that would have been previously calculated here we've got the non-controlling interest here twenty percent here at one hundred twenty two thousand five hundred dollars that was their portion here of the fair value of the subsidiary the implied fair value of the subsidiary when it was purchased here so going back up here to our supplemental schedule again just going over it here we'd have the adjusted value of the assets acquired the cash paid in this case to the to purchase the subsidiary and then the balance amount here would be four hundred and forty two thousand the difference between the seven fifty two and the three hundred and ten thousand dollars and then that would be apportioned out here either the either if we issued common stock or if the bonds were issued you'd have to include that amount here and then again the liabilities assumed and that's the liabilities of uh, the sub corporation s that were assumed in that purchase and then we'd also have to list that non-controlling interest here in the sub or sub corporations non-controlling interest portion here at the date of acquisition for one hundred twenty two thousand five hundred dollars so this is the supplemental schedule here that would have to be uh, disclosed here for this acquisition here of the parent corporation by the subsidiary corporation for the consolidated financial statements.